Hello everyone and welcome to game 2 uh, of the Magnus Carlsen Invitational match between Hikaru Nakamura and Magnus Carlsen after losing that um, game 1 where Hikaru had the, the very very sad bishop uh, now Hikaru gets the white pieces and uh, he gets his chance for retaliation so uh, uh, without further ado let's check out how this game went Hikaru with the white pieces opened with e4 now uh, we have e5 by Magnus Knight f3, knight to c6, and bishop to... that's not a bishop, bishop to b5, uh, Hikaru goes for the Rui Lopez, uh, so the Rui Lopez is on the board, we have a6, Morphe's defense, bishop a4, and now knight to f6, uh, we have castles, uh, b5, uh, bishop back to b3, and the bishop to c5, uh, Magnus goes for the uh, uh, so, sort of the uh, Arkhangelsk's uh, variation of the Rui Lopez, which is very popular, and we've been showing more and more of it on the channel, uh, one of uh, Fabiano's favorite ways to defend against uh, e4, uh, and uh, of course a4, just challenging the b5 pawn. Uh, we have rook to b8, uh, and now comes, uh, well, although you could play a lot of moves here, c3 being the most popular, Hikaru says that he's not interested in any uh, heavy theory, he just goes for simplica simplification with knight captures on e5. So a temporary piece sacrifice, but he will reclaim it after knight captures with d4. So now he gets to choose, uh, well, Magnus gets to choose which piece he returns, and bishop captures on d4 uh, was proven to be uh, the best choice of moves here. We have queen captures, and now d6, uh, Magnus defends the, uh, the knight here on e5. We have f4, Hikaru pushes it back, knight to c6, attacking Carlsen's queen, uh, sorry, Nakamura's queen, and the queen back to c3 by Nakamura. Now saying, okay, if you grab my e4 pawn, I'm going to grab your g7 pawn. So uh, we have knight back to e7, uh, as also the c6, uh, c6 knight was under attack. Uh, and here we have a trade, a captures, a captures on b5. And now uh, there is one game where queen to e1 was played, but uh, here Hikaru says to Magnus, your king is still in the center of the board. Uh, I'm not uh, just going to play some slow moves. So e5. Uh, and it is as of move 14 that we have a completely new game. Uh, so, knight to e4 by Magnus, attacking Hikaru's queen, queen to f3, now putting pressure on the knight, and the knight back to c5, pressuring the bishop here. We have bishop back to a2, not interested in giving up bishop for knight, and here finally Magnus cast castles to safety. Uh, Nakamura continues development, we have bishop to e3 and bishop to b7, putting his bishop on this beautiful diagonal, uh, showing Hikaru how you should treat your bishops. Uh, we have queen to h3. Uh, and now comes knight back to e4. Uh, it's just an excellent central outpost for the knight, and if, if it can, can remain there, uh, it's going to be a, a great outpost for Magnus. So knight to c3, Nakamura immediately challenges, and Magnus captures as uh, why not why not mess up Hikaru's pawn structure on the queen side. Uh, and bishop to d5 now, uh, wanting to trade off this strong light square bishop as well. Uh, and Hikaru says, okay, we can do that, but under my terms. So f5, here he says, uh, I'm just going to push f6 and start an attack against your king. So Magnus trades, we have bishop captures, rook captures, and now d captures on e5, grabbing that pawn. Uh, but uh, that's what Hikaru wanted. He now continues the attack with f6. And uh, Magnus has to decide uh, whether he wants to move the knight and play this position, uh, where he, white would have a... The pawn on g7 and uh, a lot of open lines and, and files and diagonals uh, or he wants to go for g captures on f6 which is what he did in the game it's a bit of a more uh, a risky option but uh, it, it is what he prefers so now he's up two pawns uh, although uh, the, uh, counting pawns is not what we will be doing this game hikaru goes for bishop to h6 uh, just attacking that rook and also there are some very dangerous ideas here for example if this knight ever moves uh, idea like queen g4 check uh, king h8 and queen g7 will be made so rook to e8 getting the rook to safety and now not uh, doing anything rash, but first uh, getting this rook, which isn't doing all that much into the game via rook to a6. Just going here to, to join the attack. So here Magnus blocks it, but in doing so he also doubles his b pawn. So rook captures c, captures on b6, and now comes queen g3 check. Forcing the knight to block, uh, otherwise you're getting uh, king h8, queen g7 mate. So knight to g6, and now of course h4, going after the knight here. Uh, and Magnus has to now figure out how he wants to defend this. There is no good de defense against h6. You are losing that knight. That's uh, uh, that's sure. Even if you move the king h5, you still can't move the knight because of checkmate. 
So here Magnus finds f5. Now the threat is just queen captures that pawn on h4 and Magnus will get to enjoy his uh, extra pawn uh, or pawns. Uh, and uh, Hikaru of course pushes it to h5. And now uh, Magnus uh, calculated that, that this will be excellent for him. He pushes f4. And now the point of this is that after you move the queen, let's say queen h3, okay, queen h4, uh, we're gonna get a nice trade here, h captures on, uh, h captures on g6, we're gonna get a queen trade here, and if you play something like captures, captures, and captures, then the problem is Magnus has a uh, king to g6, and he traps Hikaru's bishop here, and Hikaru would have to give up the bishop for some pawns here, and we uh, trade down into a pretty much equal endgame. However, after this f4 move, Hikaru decided on something else, so feel free to pause the video here, and try to find this move uh, uh, that uh, uh, Hikaru finds in this position while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you uh, spotting that this is actually the position from the thumbnail, congratulations on finding the, the Zwischenzug. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's of course H captures on G6. Not interested in uh, uh, moving your queen to safety. Point here is that if Magnus grabs the queen, it's game over. Uh, Hikaru just grabs on f7 with check. These are covered by the bishop. You have to go to h8 and now just promote the pawn to a queen. Captures, captures, you're gonna get captures, captures, and here uh, it's just uh, a piece up for Hikaru and the completely winning endgame. So Magnus cannot afford to, to, to capture the queen. Instead, he captures, uh, uh, after this uh, h captures on g6, he recaptures with the h pawn. And now queen to g4 by Hikaru. So the game continues. Uh, and here uh, Magnus immediately uh, plays a suboptimal uh, move with queen to c8. Uh, the point is you should never leave your control of the f6 square. If you leave control of f6, then black will just have to, white will just have too easy of a time uh, the, uh, creating some mating threats like, like bishop here, uh, bishop here, you're going to shift the queen to h4 and you can deliver mate here. And also you can just uh, make a nice rook with rook f3, rook h3 and the rook also joins the attack. But Carlsen did play queen to c8 and now Hikaru just goes queen to h4. Now he grabs control of the f6 square. Magnus goes queen to c5, check with king to h2, and now queen to d6, keeping an eye on the f6 square now, but now it's too late. Uh, and uh, here, bishop to g5. Uh, Hikaru now reclaims control of f6. He wants to play just bishop here and deliver checkmate uh, on h8. So Magnus has to defend, and he defends with f5. The problem with king here, uh, guarding this way, is that you have several ways uh, how to tackle it, but a most, uh, most uh, a reasonable one would be rook d1. You offer a rook for, for this checkmate, rook f6 followed by queen to h8. So after the queen moves, now you go queen h6 check, king g8 and rook d3, and again there's no defense against rook h3 followed by queen to h8. If you really persist, e4, rook h3, and now queen e5 guarding the h8 square, it's still just winning. Queen h7 check, bishop covers e7, so you're just going to deliver check here, and after a nice trade here, you're just going to pick up the rook as well, and of course, completely winning for white. So, after this uh, uh, queen, uh, bishop to g5, king g7 doesn't work, Magnus tries f5, uh, but now rook f3. Again, with the same idea, going for rook to h3. Uh, and Magnus now uh, uses his last resort, uh, e4. He wants to kick away the rook and play f3 to deliver a discovery here. But Nakamura still uh, goes for rook to h3. With f3 with check and now not moving the queen but rather bishop to f4. Just attacking Carlsen's queen. Queen to d7. And now of course queen to h8 with check. We have king to f7, rook to h7 with check, king e6. And now of course not grabbing the queen but rather uh, here Hikaru delivers a mate in one with queen to e5. And this is checkmate on the board uh, and uh, Nakamura equalizes uh, its one to one now. So two more games to be played in their uh, Magnus Invitational match and if they're going to be as exciting as the first two games, uh, well, I, I am very happy with that and I do hope you are as well. So uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Frank Holmes, Yuri David, uh, Adam Kavanaugh, uh, Kumar Ganapavarapu and Leon Virant for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon uh, with some more videos from the Magnus Invitational Tournament. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.